Greetings. I am Pastor Al Cooper, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of Grace Online. But before we get started with our dialogue and our panel discussion, I'd like uh, missionary Anissa to open us up in prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you that you are Lord. Thank you that you are God. Thank you that you reign. Thank you for this opportunity for us to come and have a conversation, have a dialogue around charity love around uh, kingdom charity. God, thank you. Thank you that the hearers will be blessed. God, give us ears to hear you. Give us revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as, as to what it means to operate in kingdom charity. Father, thank you. And not only um, wisdom, revelation, and knowledge, and understanding, but give us an application. Give us to do your word. As we hear it, God, transform us by the renewing of our mind and allow us to put your love on display. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 And as you can see, I have a second panelist here with me, um, missionary uh, Tricia. Can you yes. tell them a little bit about yourself and what you do here at Grace? Oh, well, my name is missionary Tricia Wallace, and I um, first of all, I'm honored to be at Grace for the Nations Church, and I also um, am a lead on the hospitality, and I also um, participate in helping to um, be a minister here in the household of faith as well. Uh, thank you. Uh, before we get started, uh, I like Sister Anissa, since she uh, actually facilitated the original uh, session of uh, Kingdom uh, Charity to just give us a little bit of outlook of what she thought about and uh, if she have any new revelation that she could share with the audience. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have any new revelation, but I would like to reiterate um, a few things that I, I mentioned during the session about um, the work of the Holy Spirit. Kingdom Charity, this type of love, this agape love, is something that we we need the Holy Spirit for this. Mm -hmm. um, we are not able to do this apart from the Holy Spirit. I believe when Jesus ascended on high, he, he spoke to his disciples, wait for the Holy Spirit. Wait, because I have something for you. We need the Holy Spirit to operate in this type of love. And when we accept Christ and we accept his spirit, then he can use us and flow through us to have his love be on display. His word says it's through loving kindness that I've drawn you. God wants to draw us through yes. loving kindness so that we can be vessels of his glory here on the earth. Manifest his love. Manifest what he, what he did for us. He did it for us, and now he wants to use us. We get to partner with him. Yes. We get to partner with him, and he can use us to be vessels of loving kindness. So, yeah. And then another thing, um, the Kingdom Culture Codes, it's interesting that um, Kingdom Charity is the, the last, uh, the oh, last code, code of the series that we did because I truly believe all of the codes hinge on love. Mm -hmm. They do. You cannot operate in um, any of these Kingdom Codes apart from love. Otherwise, it's just, it's sounding brass. Mm -hmm. It's a tinkling cymbal. It's, it's not, it's it's going to be flesh. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just want to reiterate, we can't do it apart from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Sister Anissa was saying that we've been in a, a series called Kingdom Culture Codes, and tonight we'll be focusing on, this panel discussion will be focusing on kingdom charity. And before we get started with the actual discussion, I'd like to just give us a running definition of kingdom charity. Kingdom charity defined as the virtues of giving, helping, and assisting other, benevolence. Jesus Christ is the perfect example of charity. In his mortal ministry, he always went about doing good, teaching the gospel, and showing tender compassion for the poor, for the afflicted, and for those who were distressed. His crowning expression of charity was his infinite atonement, the highest form of love, signifying the re reciprocal love between God and man that is made manifest in unselfish love of one's fellow man. So as we get that definition in our mind, we start thinking about it. Our first question to this panelist would be, in your own words, what does Proverbs 19, and I'll be reading from the NIV, mean to you? And it reads, Proverbs 19, it reads, whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, 
and he will reward them for what they have done. And the context in which we are looking at this scripture is that when we give to the poor, expressing our love and our pity towards them, we, are, we aren't wasting our money. It's like lending money to the Lord. And I just like these two uh, <laughs> clergy members of our clergy team just to give us uh, back to the question, in your own words, what does Proverbs 19 and 17 mean to you? I could, yes, thank you. I could start by saying, number one, charity, when we do charity, it honors God. Whatever we do for, um, for we call the least of these or for anyone, it honors God. It's unto the Lord. And so when we give out, God will even give us. He will pour back into us. And sometimes even in the scripture, it said that he repay us. It may not even be in financial um, repayment. It could be um, for health for strength, for wellness. He could even repay for coverage, you mm. know, over our families, over our loved, loved ones. So charity, that's the ultimate. It's always good to give. Actually, he called us to be a blessing unto um, one another. We are blessed to be a blessing. So that's what um, charity means mm. to me and how he will repay. That's in my words. <laughs> Very good, and I, I partner and agree with everything that you said. Um, I love how Jesus became poor so that mm. we can become rich. Yes. He left yes. everything um, mm -hmm. so that we can operate and flow and have life and, and reconcile us back to our Father. So he gave up everything mm -hmm. so that we could. Uh -huh. And so even when you said, um, it may not come back the way that we we the way that it's given. Yes. I believe that that's yeah. true. Yeah. I believe that, um, and it may not even be like let's say you do something for me. Right. It you know in the world system it's like you scratch my back I scratch your back mm. my back may not itch, <laughs> but he may use someone else he may use you my car may break down today or yes. tomorrow God forbid, yes. but. He may not use you to give me that ride. Right. He may right. use some Somebody other brother else. or sister to yes. give me a ride that yes. maybe, you know, and that's how he operates. That's yeah. how he flows. And it doesn't it. have to be um, me waiting for you to bless me because I blessed you or mm, right. it doesn't necessarily right. have to be that way. Yes. It can come in many different ways. Many different actually. ways. People we may not even know. Exactly. Actually, that's what it is, even yeah. for those who are weak. Those, when we give to those who can't even give back to us, mm -hmm. you know, that's mm -hmm. what he even wants us to do. He wants us to participate in that. Even if we, when, when charity is not even expecting something to come back to us, basically. We give it out of love and honor unto him because we're good. giving unto him. And, and that's good because, you know, we, we have to also understand that there's no respect of a person, yes. mm -hmm. you know. Yes. So we, we're not looking for people that can only do, do, do for something us. for yes. us, Correct. you know. So that's good. Uh, question number two, and it reads, what is the meaning of the indescribable gift? And we're looking at this from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10 through 15. And that word indescribable is used nowhere else in the New Testament and it's translated as meaning unutterable, meaning there's no words to be said. But I'm going to read uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 10, and 15 and set up some context. Now he who supplies seeds to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourself, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ. And for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else, and in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Verse 15, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And in context, the gift he's talking about here in verse 15 is salvation. And we find that out in uh, Ephesians 2 and 8. We have done nothing to deserve this gift since God gives us salvation based on his unmerited favor. Again, the question to you 
panelists, what is the meaning of the indescribable gift in your own words? Well, um, I believe the indescribable gift is um, the gift of salvation, the gift of, of God's perfect love, um, the gift that Jesus gave us well, first, God gave us when he loved us so much, he gave his only son. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus, um, given his life for us to be reconciled back to God, mm -hmm. um, we get to partner mm -hmm. in, in God's divine nature. Mm -hmm. um, we get to partner with him. We get to, to use what he has placed inside of us when we receive Jesus as Lord, we get to share that with the world. Mm -hmm. We get to put that on display. Um, and it's indescribable because mm -hmm. he gave us everything. Mm -hmm. He gave us everything. God gave us everything when he gave us mm -hmm. his only son. And Jesus gave us everything when he gave his life. And, and there's no amount of anything that we could do to try to, to earn that, mm -hmm. to try to, to, to work our way into righteousness. He gave us everything. That's good. I love when you say yeah. you you don't have to work for it. It's <laughs> right. not what we do. It's not the amount of um, things what we do for others or work so hard mm -hmm. or um, I read the Bible, you know, all of the Bible within a year. It's knowing that indescribable it's 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 matchless it's unspeakable we can't even explain it mm -hmm. knowing that god loved us so much where he gave us jesus period mm -hmm. which is salvation mm -hmm. um and not only for just the ones who who um accept him only but for for the world for mm -hmm. humanity mm -hmm. he gave of himself he was not thinking okay this one, I know she will be safe, so let me give her that mm -hmm. love. It's for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, the ones who are um, on the side of the road, panhandling. God sent his son mm -hmm. for those as well. The ones who may even commit murder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God sent his son to die for those mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. it's, and that's why we can't even explain it. Mm -hmm. That's why he said <laughs> it's not by might or by the power, it's by the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's not by the work, what we do, it's because the love of God, and I thank him yeah. for it. And yes, it's, it's matchless. Beautiful, because yes. he said when we were enemies to the cross. Yes. He did yes. it for us, he did even, it for when us. We're enemies. even when we're enemies. That's Won't he a do love, it? that's yes. a that's, matchless that's love. What a love. It can't be, it can't be matched, yes, it can't be exactly. compared. It's just exactly. a perfect love. Exactly. Great, yes. and, uh, and I was when I was looking at that, uh, doing my little research, and, yes. uh, and, and the word says the word indescribable is only used one time in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. my, my my mind singly went back to the cross mm -hmm. yes. because there was only one, one sacrifice, yes. one sacrifice. Yes. perfect enough yes. to yes. save yes. the world. Yes, that, yeah. that's that, 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 that this right away just yes. oh my. God, this, this revelation is yes. so deep at times. You yes. know, you, you can't afford to pass by words in this scripture mm -hmm. or when you look up a, and you look up the meaning of those Greek words, mm -hmm. how they just illuminate yes. everything that we see in Christ. Yes, the only once time, yeah. mm -hmm. one, one and only sacrifice. No more, no more sheep, no more cows, yes. no more animals, because mm -hmm. none could suffice. Right, yes. right. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, this is so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Question number three. Mm -hmm. How would you compare the love as defined by the world and God's love? And uh, give an example of each. In the, in the scripture that we're using in, from the context of 1 John 3, 16 through 18, and I'll be reading from the NIV version, it reads, this is how we know what love is. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Mm -hmm. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech like the world does, but with actions and truth. Now, this passage points to Jesus' sacrifice as the ultimate embodiment of God's love for us. Jesus laid down his life for us. However, it comes with a price because we, too, must lay down our lives nice. for others. Yes. So again, the question to you guys is, how would you compare the love as defined by the world 
and God's love. Well, That's it. Um, where uh, the world's love is, it's, it's conditional. Mm -hmm. It's uh, if I do something for you, mm -hmm. then you will do something for me. Mm -hmm. Or what I'm understanding now with the world, it's so easy to say, I love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just easy to use those words. Is it what? L-O-V-E, four letter, <laughs> um, to say, I love you, but... There's a but behind it. <laughs> but God's love is it's unconditional, whether we do right or whether we do wrong. And it's not just by words only, it's by deeds. He sent his son to die for us. That's the ultimate love. And he also holds us in the palm of his hands. When we cry, he's there to, to uplift us. When we're, we're down and out, he, his presence is there as well. When we do wrong, he still reaches out his hands to say, come on, my daughter, come on, my son, I love you no matter what. Brush yourself off, let's, let's go. What a love is that? And also, will we lay our life down for our brothers and our sisters. And that's what he requires of us. Lay, laying our lives down may not be symbolically going and die because Jesus does that. But if, yes, if my sister is in need or my brother is in need, will I step out to help? Would I step out on faith to try to help that brother or sister? Mm -hmm. I believe, or even if, um, if there's a situation where, you know, you hear someone talking about your brother or sister, mm -hmm. would you able to step in and fill in the gap mm -hmm. and, and, and stand for that brother or sister? Mm -hmm. That's what I gather from that um, passage of scripture. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you mentioned um, when we discuss sacrificial love, mm -hmm. it can be misinterpreted um, by someone who doesn't understand what mm -hmm. sacrificial love is. It's not strapping a bomb to yourself, going up, blowing up some people. Jesus did it once and he did it for all of us. He did it for all of us. The love of this world is, is it, there, there are limits to it. There is the but, mm -hmm. I love you but, <laughs> or I love you until you stop serving me, mm -hmm. until you stop benefiting mm -hmm. me. But the love of Christ is boundless, it's limited, limitless. There are no, there's nothing that can, there's no height, there's no depth, there's no place that we can go, that he's not with us. That he, he, he said, if you make your bed in hell, I'll be there. It's without limit. His love is, is without condition. He love us, as you said, even when we, um, even when we're wrong and we did wrong and we know we're wrong, he still loves us. He loves us through it. And it's that love that is, that is matchless, that is, is, is boundless, that is what he wants to use us for mm -hmm. here on this earth. Yeah. Um, so that people can come to him, so that people can wonder what they must do to be saved, so that people can want to know about him. Because even when someone does you wrong and you yet love them, mm -hmm. despite, that, despite that, the time will come when they will inquire and when they will wonder, why didn't they um, get rid of me? Or why did they still um, care? Or why did they still help me even when I didn't help them? It's those moments where we have an opportunity because it always is about a choice. Or we have an opportunity to allow the love of Christ to flow through us. He said, um, this type of love suffers long. A lot of times people think this, this type of love is so fat, flowery and perfect and just, you know, it is perfect. It is a perfect love. But there are hard times when mm -hmm. this love pops up. Mm -hmm. It's usually when we're, mm -hmm. you're, you're suffering, you're being persecuted. There are things that are, are, are hard to deal with. This love is always on display, always. And, and, and God is love. Yes, he so is. So as we learn about him, that's how we can able to love our, our neighbors as ourselves. That's how we can able to love our brothers and sisters. That's how we can able through him to lay things down mm -hmm. because of us 
a for natural we can't nature. We can't, we can't do it. We can't we do can't. it without him. That's why as we learn about him, that's why as we grow in him, that's why as we come into the knowledge of him, we can able to exercise his love to others as well. Yeah. You know, it's funny because um, the Bible in the Old Testament, there were four words that translated to the word love in the, word, in the Greek. And they were storie, which is uh, a family type love. Oh, yeah. It was uh, agape, which is the God type of love. It was filio, which is brotherly, brotherly love. love. And it was eros, where we get the word erotic from, which is romantic type of love. But do you know in the New Testament, only two of those translate into the New Testament? Oh, there was agape, the God kind of love, and filio, the brother kind, brotherly love. And when you look at the last words, the last two commandments that, God, that Jesus gave to his disciples, mm -hmm with those two loves. Yes. Love God yes. with all your heart and all your soul yes. and love your brother as yourself. I, yes. I don't think he's ruling out the romantic love, right. Right. but I think he, he knows it gets convoluted. Right. Yes. Right. You know, yes. Right. <laughs> it, it gets, it turns to lust more than it turns to love. Right. Yes. And it's in it, it yes. places in the marriage, yes. you know, for that romantic. Mm -hmm. But that's funny that 99% of the time in the New Testament, those are the only two words that it translates to mm -hmm. agape and filio. Yeah. So, so this is so good. That's I mean, good. You could, when you think about love and, and, and its origins and, and where it comes from, it's not that Jesus, he, not that he doesn't want us to enjoy pleasure, mm -hmm. but he wants us in the proper perspective, mm -hmm. the proper motivation, because he knows that we're weak. He knows that we're weak and we're going to lust. I mean, we can't get around it. Although he forgives us for our sins, doesn't mean we're sinless. Right. So. Right. Our last question. Oh, this is so good. I, yeah, I just want to, you know, uh, the last question. The apostle, Paul, the apostle Paul spoke these words to the church of Ephesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And he said that in Acts 20, verse 35. Now, why do you think Paul reminds the church of this quote? Because this quote is from Christ. So here, here's the uh, scripture that I read it to you. Acts 20, verse 35 says, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of Jesus Christ himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And in this context, what Jesus is saying is that our giving is more blessed. He's telling us that there is more happiness or joy to be found in God when we give rather than when we are receiving. Wow. That is so true because um, even with our with our gifts and our talents and our time and when as God um, show us who we are in Him, He enhances it where we're we're learning even more and so it's a joy to give. It's a joy to do. It's a joy to, um, or it should be a joy, actually. <laughs> That's what I should say, clarity. Um, because sometimes we frown upon it, but we should know that he gives us these gifts and these blessings because that blessing is a gift as well. To it's not just for us to sit on it. It's I think mm -hmm. about the, the 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 man with the talent. You know, when he gives, it's for us to sow into others. It's to sow into the kingdom. It's to um, give unto someone who may not even have. Um, and so it's it should be a joy when we give unto someone because mm -hmm. we know that God always give unto us. Mm -hmm. And he gives unto us even with the measure of our faith. He give unto us. Even, he gives unto us even sometimes when our faith is limited. Mm -hmm. He give unto us. I can use an example if you don't mind where mm -hmm. yesterday, you know, um, I, I paused, I was driving, and suddenly it just dawned on me where, where my two children now, where I see that I, God, God just bestowed, stole his love and mm. his grace where he put people in our lives where they're just pouring and giving and giving. And I'm like, God, you're making it so easy for mm -hmm. me and, and my family, and I'm so grateful because m not knowing that, even though many times he may have given me enough to give unto someone else, and now he's turning around where people is giving unto, unto my bosom. And that's where the joy lies, where you give, even if you may think you don't have to give. When you give, you know that the joy of the Lord will always help you to, re to receive his blessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thank you. 
um, as you were speaking, I was uh, sitting there listening and I know our, you wanted the response on it being more blessed to give than to receive. But I think it is so important mm -hmm. for us to receive the love of Christ mm -hmm. so that we can give yeah. mm -hmm. and yeah. so that we can flow in that mm -hmm. blessing. Yeah. That has to be first and foremost, receive the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then we're able to freely give. It won't be burdensome. burdensome. Yes, it won't true. be, you know how you said, um, we, it, should, it should be a joy. Mm -hmm. When we truly receive the love of mm -hmm. Christ, mm -hmm. it is a joy to give. Mm -hmm. And even when we're going through trials and tribulation and suffering, there's something that rises up. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. if it doesn't feel good, when you have that relationship with him, he will make it where, where you get to a place where you're like, I count it all joy, Lord, because you yes. know he's not going to fail you. You know that even in your, in your, in your giving, in your sacrifice, in your, you know that you're being blessed. You know that you are being blessed. You know that you're, you're operating in his will, in his timing, in, in the season that he had you in. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. And it's that is true. Thing. Yeah. Um, though, and, and that's beautiful, especially for those who are in the <laughs> household of faith, yeah. who, who knows that God, um, that he blesses us to give and, mm -hmm. and where we count it all joy. Mm -hmm. Indeed. But for those who are not in the household of faith, who mm -hmm. um, may not understand count it all joy, for those who may um, feel like, you know what, this is my last and how can I give it? Knowing that it is tr true too, to know that through Christ, it should be joyful. So that's the part where I mention about sometimes it may feel like, whoa, no, it's because he even said in his word, do not be weary in well-doing. Mm -hmm. He know that sometimes even those in the household of faith will be weary mm -hmm. in well-doing, in, 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 in counting all joy. But that's where his grace and his love comes through. That's mm -hmm. where, you know, he, he, his teaching comes through. That's where we have to continuously know that it's through him mm -hmm. all the time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. You know, it, it's amazing that because uh, we have to understand that uh, Christ is the ultimate sacrifice and, and we are to immolate him. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, he, he, he gave his everything, his life mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have to understand that when we're doing those things, when we're giving of ourselves, when we're yeah. loving people, when we're, we're not receiving, but what we're giving to those people that we're becoming more like him. Like yes. him. Yes. And then the love of Christ is shining through us. It's no yes. longer Al Cooper that you're seeing. It's Christ that, that you're seeing always. because that, that's what it's all about. No good things. Yeah. yeah, apart from him, there's no good things in yeah. us. He gives all good gifts. Every good and perfect gift, perfect gift comes, comes from, from him. him. Yes, oh, this is I'm so grateful. good. Mm -hmm. uh, we're coming to a close, but before we close, I'd like for each of the panelists to just put a capstone on, on what you feel about uh, Kingdom Charity. Yeah. May I go? <laughs> sure. Kingdom <laughs> Charity. Uh, this was beautiful. I, I am so glad. And um, this just opens up my um, thought process of, as, as I mentioned before, that it's an honor. Charity, it's an honor unto God. Mm -hmm. he, he blesses us to be a blessing. I know we may say that often, but when we understand the fullness of it, that's when we can speak of it as well. Mm -hmm. He is love. He, he sent his only begotten son to die for us once where we don't even have to go through that process. We, he, he, we, he just wants us to live and he, mm -hmm. he everlasting life. You know, but I, I, I hope that at least one someone can understand and hear what we, we had discussed today because um, we too, we too had to learn. We too had to come into the knowledge. We too had to understand. We too had to say, you know what, God, not my will, but let your will be done mm -hmm. as you teach us, as you show us your love and your grace and your mercies and the goodness, what follows us daily. That's what causes us to say yes. That's what causes us to, to give and to give freely and give joyfully. And not just religiously, but joyfully. Mm -hmm. Because when we give, we know that we're giving unto the Lord mm -hmm. as well. 
Well, um, mine is just going to be short and sweet. Uh, kingdom charity, when I think of it, it, it's the love of Christ. It's, it's, it's God's perfect love. And apart from him, we can't do any good thing. Nothing. There, there is nothing that I can do apart from him that's pleasing or honorable to him. But in him and through him, I can, he can use me as a vessel. He can use you as a vessel. He can use us as a vessel here on this earth. Amen. And again, uh, just like to thank you guys for joining us and uh, just being a part of these uh, last few several weeks where we had our Kingdom Culture Cult. And uh, as we are getting to come to a close, I'd just like uh, missionary uh, Trisha to pray us out. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this hour, what we were able to be in your presence to, to extol you, to acknowledge you, to tell you thanks for all what you have done. Thanking you for sending your only begotten son who died for our sins and thanking you for giving us life and life more abundantly and, and wisdom and knowledge and understanding towards your word. Thank you because you are the ultimate love, what we try to um, live up to. Thank you for teaching us how to love. And I pray that as we were able to share on um, some of the word and even our thoughts that someone was able to receive and understand and even be blessed by this word. I thank you because you continuously able to teach us and mold us and shape us.